Welcome to this week's Monday Minutes. My name is Kelly. And my name is Jesse. And this week we have a very special guest, Heather Hernandez. Welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, yes, I'm Heather. I am a real cataloger. You can tell I'm a real cataloger because I have my t-shirt with Mark format on it and awesome. my cardigan and my pearls that can be clutched. <laughs> so, so great. <laughs> The uniform is half of, you know, the skill set. Absolutely. Well, we invited Heather to Monday Minutes this week so she can talk a little bit about COHA and OCLC connection. There is a beautifully written article in the COHA manual, Heather as a contributor, um, where you can kind of see these static images and it walks you through the process, but we thought it would be great to have Heather come and join us and kind of give us a little visual run through of the whole process. So Heather's here today to join us and, and show us that integration. And I'll go ahead and share my screen. This is great. Thank you so much, Heather, for doing this. Oh, People are going to love this. It's the sort of thing that when I was getting started with COHA, I would have really appreciated. Mm -hmm. So this is our COHA catalog, and today I'll be showing you the connection client interface. Uh, I use client most often. It's a little less user friendly, a little less easy to navigate for beginners. That's another reason I thought it would be good to show off that interface. People that use connection on the web will have the exact same functionality with, a, in my opinion, a little bit easier navigation for newbies. And I have this, let's get the record back. I have this record that I cataloged from scratch in Koha. If we look at the MARC format, we can see that there is no OCLC number. It hasn't yet been contributed to OCLC. So when doing an original record on Koha, the first thing that I do is I go ahead and save it. And I always choose the MARC Unicode UTF-8 format. Save the file. And it's right there. Oh, now you get to see my messy temporary folder. Huh? I think everybody has a messy temporary yeah. folder. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> then in connection client, I will import that record. I have my client set to go ahead and delete that file because I don't need to keep it in my messy temporary folder and make that folder more messy. And then here is my record imported from Koha. Now the next thing that I'll do is try to validate it. And I know for a fact it's not going to validate because there are quite a few fields that are COHA specific that OCLC doesn't know what to do with. So like the 952 is the items, 999 is the unique record number. Exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and just take out this 952 field. Just completely delete it. Done with that. The 999 I am going to copy this subfield C because I'm going to need that later to overlay my record with yeah. my OCLC number. Yes. And then go ahead and zap that field. OCLC also doesn't really like the subfield nines in the authority control fields because that is the authority linking. So for our listeners out there in Koha, we'll put that nine field in so it'll link to your authority records in the system. That way, if you click on those while you search, it'll bring back all the attached bibliographic records to that authority. Which is very handy. And then also, 
if the authority record gets updated or changed because of the linkage, the headings in the bibliographic records are already changed later. It's super handy. I love that. <laughs> so let's go ahead and see if the record validates now. I forgot something. Oh, the 942. I forgot. There we go. Take that one out as well. And the 942s are unique for the bib. Yes. Yep. Now it validates beautifully. I can go ahead and produce and update my holdings. And now I have my beautiful OCLC number. All I have to do now is put that 999 subfield C back in, which is my bibliographic record number. And if I had forgotten that, it's really easy to get back. It's simply the number in the URL of my record right here. Absolutely, good hint, good hint, Heather. From, you know, ask me how I learned that. <laughs> <laughs> so now I can go ahead and export it into Koha via the OCLC gateway. Now, Heather, what did you hit for those for that quick connection? Was that a shortcut on your keyboard or did you hit the E button on your? I use the keyboard shortcuts in Connection Client quite a bit, but it's also available under the action menu. Okay. And I do get a report that it was overlaid. Excellent. If I want, I can grab this URL for the record number. But since I already had the record up, I can just reload it. And then when I look at my mark record, there's my shiny, pretty OCLC number. Beautiful. Yeah, easy as pie. So next, let's look at some copy cataloging via Coha's Z3950 interface. Oh, this is, this is a popular one with a lot of partners. This is good. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And it's popular even if you don't use OCLC. It's a great, great function. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We can go right to cataloging. I went from more to cataloging, then new from Z3950. And I always have the Library of Congress selected, but I can add OCLC bibs. And I'm gonna turn off Library of Congress right now since we're really looking at OCLC. There we go. There we are. And one trick I do is I will sort by LCCN because then that gets me high quality Library of Congress records in OCLC. And let's say I've got this beautiful edition of the Annotated Hobbit from 2002 revised and expanded. At this point, I can do a mark preview to see, is this really the record that I'm interested in? And yeah, that looks like a shiny, cool record. So I will go ahead and import that. Now, if anybody is using OCLC and you didn't know you could make it a target on your own COHA system, please reach out. We can certainly help you do that um, at a, Z, a new Z39.50 target. I know Jesse and I have done a add a new Z39.50 target, but specifically for OCLC, we're happy to help. And at this point, I can edit the record. I can go to the advanced editor, do all those functions. I'm just gonna hit save right now. But we'll pretend that I thoroughly copy cataloged it. And we're just gonna add the item. Now at this point, we have to remember OCLC doesn't have our holdings. And if we participate in interlibrary loan, 
that's a really important step. But it's as simple as grabbing the OCLC number, going into client, and produce and add your holdings. Mm -hmm. And people familiar with uh, OCLC connection client will know that it also has batch processing. So again, you could work with Bywater to get reports, to get exports, and you could do these functions to add your holdings in batch later on. Perfect. Absolutely. I didn't know you could one off uh, update your holding. So that's really helpful. I think if anybody didn't know that, just like myself. Definitely. Exactly. Yeah. And then, of course, there's the copy cataloging step. Let's go ahead and grab that record again and pretend I'm doing copy cataloging right here in client. That annotated Hobbit actually has my holdings right now. I would make my edits. And I would go ahead and add an item record here. And I've got a text shortcut in client that allows me to just add my usual default fields. Nice. I would go ahead and add a call number, edit it a little bit for the way Koha likes it. Oops. And then I would add, say, my barcode number. Go ahead, produce, export as normal. Mm -hmm. Excellent. This is great. So those are, those are the three most usual cataloging steps for bibliographic records. Um, authority records are similar in some ways. The Z3950 is very similar. For that, we go to authorities. Here, the new from Z3950 is under the new authority menu. And again, OCLC authorities can be a target. I've never seen it this way before, so this is fascinating. It's, I love being able to search both the Library of Congress authority file and the OCLC authority file. And I'm gonna do name any. There we go. And he occurs in both the OCLC version of the authority record is right here. Very nice. And kind of a neat thing is that the Library of Congress version, as you can see, also carries the OCLC number. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And then you could import your authority record this way. In connection client, it's pretty much the same, except that there is no gateway export for authorities yet. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that this becomes a future development. So I have a couple of authority records here, and in order to get them into my COHA catalog, I would need to do a batch operation. So I would change my options for export to file, prompt for file name and apply. Then call up my authority records. And now here I'll, I won't use my keyboard shortcut. Let's see, I go batch. Oh, no, action, export. And you'll see export is ready. It didn't just do the gateway thing right away because I have that option changed. Now I go batch, process batch, authorities. 
exports. Okay. And now it's exporting the batch and prompting me for a file name. It goes ahead and processes. I see it was all successful. Then I want to remember to reset <laughs> to the gateway export from my <laughs> bibliographic records. And then in Koha, to import the batch, it's going to be tools. And you could do it this way for bibliographic records too. Yes, yes. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Stage for import. Grab your file, upload. I could enter comments about it. I choose authority and my character encoding, mark eight, yes. my format mark. I choose to match on the 010 LC card number and replace the record if there is a match. If no, add the incoming record, stage for import, which should be pretty quick because I've only got two records. And yes, processed everything nicely. I can manage them. And see my records, no match, but it looks great. Go ahead and please import that into the catalog. Awesome. Nice, nice. That's great. I've always seen bibliographic exports and imports, but I've never seen authorities. So this is a learning experience for us too. Have you, Kelly, seen the authorities? 100% uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and it is remarkably similar. <laughs> Functionality was always, I knew that existed, but I've never seen anyone do it. So this is, this is 100% super helpful. So I'll go ahead and stop my share. The, uh, the only other thing that I would tell people to look at is the manual section for OCLC. And I'd add that I was working with Coha version 20.05. And when you shortcutted your 952 values from your text in OCLC, that is also in the manual how to construct that text string. So we will refer back that to, to the blog post. We will refer back to the document PDF that Heather um, also contributed in, which I've shared hundreds of times to people um, with those screenshots, which is super helpful because we, we don't have OCLC. So it's great to have that document to share with others. Yeah, one thing I've really liked about the Coho community is that this sort of inter-system operations, since it's so difficult for, say, COHA users and supporters without OCLC to support OCLC and OCLC without COHA to support COHA, that it, the community is really helpful at working together to generate some documentation, some demos, some procedures, and is always there for asking questions too. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's Absolutely. one of those communities to be a part of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 100%. And of course, you know, our listserv, the COHA listserv, the Bywater Partner listserv are great resources as well to ask questions. Um, and we're always happy to hook people up with each other when they, when we know they're, they're needing some help. So hook them up. Um, but this has been fantastic, Heather. Yeah. This loads of information for people. Yeah, this has been great. Thank you for joining us for Monday Minutes. Thank you. Oh, Thank my you. pleasure. I'm, I'm happy to give it back a little bit since so many OCLC and COHO users were so helpful to me when we were getting started as was by water. Oh, oh, good. Oh, good. Okay. Well, as always, have a great week and thanks for watching. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye.